Welcome. So today we're going to be going through macros in Bitwig, uh, which is something that if you use Ableton Live, uh, this is very similar to what you're used to. Uh, and if, if you don't, uh, this is going to help you get to grips uh, with the whole concept and what, what it's best used for. So let's start right on the left here. Uh, this is what the macros screen looks like. And every device has one of these macro screens if you click on these two little arrows. And as you can see, there are eight knobs right here. And on top of each of these knobs is an assign button. Uh, so we've gone through device mappings in a previous video, so I'd recommend that you check that out first if you haven't already, because uh, that kind of helps you understand this whole thing. But if you want to jump right into it, feel free. The difference between macros and device mappings is that macros allow you to decide how many parameters you want to control with one knob. So you can control the cutoff, the resonance, uh, you can control LFO, rate, and gain. All four of those things you can control all with one knob. And you can decide how much of each of those knobs you control. Okay? So let's start with one knob though, just so you get the hang of it. Don't worry if you don't get it yet. Uh, we're going to click on the cutoff. Okay? And anytime you click on a parameter in Bitwig, it will show up here with the live setting. And you just click on the first macro knob and then we have the choice of going up either down or up as you can see so what i've done there is i've allowed this knob to control as you can see over here just watch that cutoff knob it controls the cutoff knob all the way up to the full value right of 10 over here it doesn't have to be 10 and if you have a look at this blue area, that is the area that the macro knob will control. If I half that, the maximum value down here of the macro value will only bring the actual cutoff to the halfway point between where it starts down here to bam up here to about seven. So it's about three to seven, right? So this is really useful when you're um, you know, doing stuff like this and you have a synth like this that you don't really need to go all the way up to 10. I mean, let, let's check it out. Let's hear what it sounds like from 7 to 10. Nothing really is happening right there. So that's kind of a waste of space. And also this is very distracting. So if you have a knob that you can use from the start to finish and every part of that range is useful i feel like that is better for your workflow okay so we're going to limit this uh setting we're going to put this back to where it was and we'll allow this macro knob to bring it up to around seven okay So we have a pretty good range of cutoff there. Doesn't go too low, doesn't go too high, uh, which is really nice. And the other thing that is very good about macros is that as you can see, when I click this again, I'll deactivate the mapping, okay? Now this is set in stone, I'm gonna rename it. Always a good idea to do that. Uh, cutoff. Now, the coolest thing about this to me is that when I f mess with that cutoff knob, I am not messing with the original value of that synth patch. Okay, so you have a look at this knob right here, this, this blue area. That's not, you know, it's not messing with the patch. I still know exactly where that patch value, original patch value is. It's right there on the orange, right? Where the knob is pointing. Always preserved. And when I go down to zero, 
it goes back to the original patch. It always goes back to the default state. So I find this really useful. Um, it's one of those things that seems like, oh, that's not really that great, but you know what? It'll get you to tweak your synth a lot more because you're not afraid to mess the patch up. So this, this helps preserve the patch and which means it frees you up to really, really mess with your sounds, you know, automate them over the track and uh, it just encourages you to do that, which I think is a great thing. So I'm gonna put the same, uh, you do the same thing with the resonance on this synth. So again, click on the resonance knob. It shows up right here. Click on the macro. And we can scan and find a good range for the cutoff resonance. The best way to do it, obviously, in my opinion, just um, bring this macro knob all the way up. And uh, from that point, you can decide how far you want to go with it. Okay, so now we have, I'm going to rename this nice and clean. We have a cutoff and a resonance that we can control as much as we want, up and down, all the way, or halfway, any, any point in there, it will not mess with the patch. It is changing the values on the synth, but it will not mess with the patch because as soon as I go back down to zero, everything's exactly as it was. So you don't have to worry ever again about losing your patch settings, you know. So anyway, we've got the cutoff and resonance. We know that macros are very useful for preserving patches, and they're also very useful for giving you the ability to set a range. The next thing that macros are good for is for modulating more than one thing at once, okay? So let's say we wanna mess with something a little bit more nitty gritty like a LFO. So what if we wanted this sound? I'm gonna turn it down a little. What if we wanted this sound to have a little bit of some wobble and the ability to control that wobble. Let's start really simple. So we normally would just introduce a, uh, we would introduce an LFO gain as it is in silence. So the strength of the LFO. So I'm gonna click on that, map it, click on that button, set the range, and of course go all the way full Okay, so that's pretty crazy. Like, it's not really usable, you know, that's too crazy there. But what, what makes this so cool is that I can, I can mitigate this. I can control this not with just the range. This is a cool thing, all right? This is coming up. I can say set the rate to just chill out a little bit. So I click on the rate, click on the modulation, go all the way up. Okay, this is the crazy wobble it's just a little too much now what we can do at the top end slow it down I think that's pretty cool for this uh, tutorial that's cool all right so now Pull back. You can hear that little tiny wobble. It's very, very quick, but it works because it's very minimal. As we pull it up, it's going to slow down.
so oh, there's a lot of fun to be had there. So that was, uh, you know, it's it's just so much more interesting to do stuff like that. Um, this is not new, you know, like you could always do this with a modulation matrix. Uh, there's a whole lot of ways in history that you could do this, you know, back in the day, even before computers were around. But the key here is the ease, right? So I can save this as a patch uh, and include this modulation matrix. I don't need to learn modulation matrix of each synth. I learn how to use this modulation matrix or this macro system that they call it. And I can apply that to absolutely any synth. So let's say over the next few years, you gather a few synths, which you will do, right? Pretty natural. Uh, you don't have to relearn how you work with the synths so much. It's a little bit less, you know? So you, you know, uh, immediately you know how to manipulate your synths. No matter if you, if you gain a new synth that you haven't used before, you still have all these tools here. Uh, you can do all that kind of cool stuff. Um, and not to mention the fact that it preserves the patch. That is something that is kind of new to this system and that uh, there was no good way of doing this in the past. Before Ableton, before Bitwig, you would always be messing with the patch. Um, and yeah, automation would probably help you out there, but it's not clean. You know, this is clean. As soon as I turn this to zero, I'm done. It's back to normal, okay? So that's, that's basically macros. Uh the last thing I will say is that if you save a patch within Bitwig, it will save the macro settings with it. Uh, and I will rename this because that's the right thing to do. Um, so cut off resonance wobble. So these things, are, they're, they're going to save with this patch. That's another cool thing. So, uh, and when you save these things, they give you options so you can tag them. So if you build your own library, which I highly recommend, uh, you will find, find it pretty easy to find stuff that's, you know, that you're looking for in the moment. All right, so, well, thank you very much. This is, um, this is all I have to say about macros, and uh, I hope you learned something from it. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Thank you.